So today's topic is 7.3 absolute value equations. That's on pages 380 to 391. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of the absolute value of real numbers and equations and functions involving the absolute value of linear and quadratic functions. Our lesson objectives, number one, to learn how to solve an absolute value equation. Number two, to be able to solve an absolute value word problem. And number three, to be able to verify answers in order to determine if an answer is extraneous or not. So we learned last day that an absolute value function has two pieces to it. There's a positive part, which is f of x, and there's a negative part, negative f of x. And that's if your function happened to be above the x-axis, which was greater than or equal to zero, or if it was below the x-axis, which was less than zero. Now that we're solving equations, we must consider both positive and negative versions of what is in the absolute value signs. And what that means is that we have to make two equations and solve each one. So here's a quick little example. It says absolute value of six minus x is equal to two. Well, we know if we remove that absolute value sign, that six minus x is equal to two. But we also know that it could be negative. So we could have a negative six minus x that's equal to two. And then we just solve both equations accordingly. So we have negative x equaling uh, negative four, which means x equals four. And then we have negative six plus x equals two. And that means that x equals eight. And we can check both these answers. If we plug a four in here, we get six minus four which is the absolute value of that is two. If we plug an eight in there, six minus eight, well, that is negative two, but if we take the absolute value of it, then it equals two. Here's our next example. It says the absolute value of x minus five is equal to x squared minus eight x plus 15. So we can write two equations again, one where we have a positive x minus five, and that equals x squared minus eight x plus 15. And the other equation would be where we have a negative x minus five, and that still equals x squared minus eight x plus 15. So we just have to solve this equation on, and to solve a quadratic equation, we need to move everything to one side. So we make it equal zero. That means if you subtract x from both sides, we get x squared minus nine x. And then we add five to both sides, that equals, oh, that's positive 20. And then we get something that is factorable, two things that multiply to the positive 20, add to negative nine. Well, that's x minus five and x minus four. So we get two answers, x equals five and x equals four. Over here, you need to remember and be careful when you use this negative that it's negative x and then plus five. Make sure the negative gets distributed to both things. And then we can again, move everything to one side and solve the quadratic. Now you might have to use um, the quadratic formula at some point or um, decomposition or completing the square or something that'll help you uh, solve this quadratic. We'll see what happens in this case. Uh, we're gonna add x to both sides that's x squared minus 7x. We're going to subtract 5. That's positive 10. And so this is still factorable, which is nice. Um, two things that multiply to positive 10 and add to negative 7. That's x minus 5 and x minus 2. So we have two answers there too, 5 and 2. Now we have to remember to check our answers. So in order to check them, we just plug them into the original equation. So if I'm going to check x equals 5, if I plug it into the left-hand side, I get zero. If I plug it into the right-hand side, I get 25 minus 40 plus 15. 25 plus 15 is 40 minus 40 is zero, so that checks out. So x equals five is good. And we had those in both of our equations, so that's a good answer. How about x equals four? If I plug in x equals four, I get the absolute value of negative one on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I get 16 minus eight times four plus 15. Well, 16 plus 15 is 31 minus 32 is negative one, but we have the absolute value of negative one cannot equal negative one because the absolute value of negative one is positive one. So it does not equal negative one, which means this is an extraneous or an extra answer. We can get rid of it. So you need to check your answers at all times to make sure you don't end up with some false answers. Uh, we do need to check out the X equals two as well. When we do that, we get absolute value of negative three equals four minus 16 plus 15. Four plus 15 is 19 minus 16 is equal to three. And the absolute value of negative three is three. So that one also checks out. So we have three, only two answers, x equals five and x equals two. So if you wanted to double check that last answer just by graphing it, we had the absolute value of x minus five right here. Here's the absolute value of x minus five. And we're saying, that that thing is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 15. And so when we plot them both on the same 
um, graph, you can see that there is two points where these two things intersect, and that's one at the x value of, of two, and the other one is at the x value of five. So if you could graph these things, um, it's a good way to verify your answers, and it shows why that other answer, which was four, isn't an actual answer. Um, it's because that is not where those two uh, lines intersect. Here's our final example. It says a computerized process controls the amount of fish that is packaged in a specific size of can. The computer program sets the ideal mass at 170 grams, but allows for a tolerance of plus or minus six grams. So they can be off six grams, either too heavy or six grams too light. Solve an absolute value equation for the maximum and minimum mass, which we call M, of fish in this size of can. So you're, they're basically asking you to write your own absolute value equation. So if we had M and we subtracted 170 from it, we should get either a positive or a negative six. And all that means is that if we take the absolute value of that, we should get an answer that is equal to six. So again, this absolute value means that we could have two answers here. If we solve this thing, M minus 170 equals six, that means M could equal 176. And if we solve the negative version of that, we should get an answer that's six grams less than 170. So let's double check. Negative M plus 170 equals six. That means uh, we have negative M equaling negative 164 or M equaling positive 164. So we do get two answers and they are the two answers that we instinctively know we should get. One that is six grams over and one is that is six grams under but we can write these sort of things as an absolute value equation, knowing that the plus or minus would go on the right hand side and the absolute value of your variable minus the value that you have um, goes on the left hand side. So in summary, when taking the absolute value of an equation, you must remember to make your absolute value thing, and that's why I just put the two stars into it, into both the positive of that thing and the negative of that thing when you remove the absolute value signs. That means you're also gonna have two equations that you need to solve. If you're not solving two equations, you're only gonna get half the, the right answers. And it is possible to have an extraneous answer or to have an equation that is impossible to solve. So for example, this one where it says absolute value of x minus four is equal to negative three, well, that's impossible because you can't take the absolute value of something and get a negative answer. So in this case, there are no answers. You would have, uh, sometimes you would write it as an empty set or you could even just say no answers. Um, there are many real life applications of absolute value, especially when dealing with manufacturing where you have to be uh, either really close to a given value. And it doesn't matter if you're over or under that given value as long as you're close to it. So your assignment is on pages 389 to 391. Good luck and we'll see you in class.